The High Tech Nomad here, and we've all done it. You go to go sign up on a website, and you put in a password, and you have to remember it. So you put in the same password that you've been using for the last 500 years, which is why you're a security risk. Well, in part two of our series on security, specifically using the YubiKey, I'm going to show you how to configure your YubiKey to create on-the-go, super secure passwords that are going to be super easy for you to remember. We're going to cover that and more today in this episode of The High Tech Nomad, right after this. When the technology came, we were all very, very afraid. It all happened so fast. So very, very fast. It was so confusing. We thought we would never figure any of it out. And then one day, a man decided to help us fight back. Someone who traveled the world to help us. Someone who understood the technology. Someone to show us how to make technology work. For us. He called himself the high-tech nomad. Woohoo! I don't know if you're excited, but I'm excited. You guys have been with me, some of you, all the way through the first video, and we're coming up on our 100th video, which will be in probably about a week or so from now. We're going to have a big premiere. we got a really big big episode coming for that one. So make sure that you get that. Make sure you click the subscribe button. Uh, we're gonna actually do it as a premiere and there's gonna be lots of good stuff in it. We're gonna be giving away some UB keys and just, we're gonna have a fantastic time. All right, let's get into it. The average user has six passwords or variations of them, like cat, dog, cat, dog, one, each of which is shared across multiple websites. So let's say you've been using the internet for a couple of years. That means you may have as many as 150 different websites that have stored versions of your passwords. Now, many of these websites you might not even use anymore. For example, when's the last time you logged into MySpace? Sorry, MySpace. But chances are the password you used for some old forgotten website is still a password that you use for something else. And it might be the password that you use for your bank account or your office mail. So here's what happens. Over the period of time, every time you go to set up a website, you're in a hurry. And so the first thing you do is use the same username and password that you've been using over and over again. If you use LastPass, it has a couple of nice utilities. This is a nice utility that it has. It will actually scan your computer and pull in all the passwords. And you'll be surprised how many passwords are actually sitting inside of your computer. Now, what you're looking at is something from a real person. And what we see is, is that 23 of the websites that this person uses, we know have been broken into. So there's 23 that we know without fail, they really should change the password on those. But the more scary number is coming up on the left, which is that out of a total of 1,009 websites, this person has used the same password 491 times. That means if they get broken into on one of those sites, I would now be able to use that web, that password to unlock 490 other websites that this person uses. And I guarantee you some of them are financial ones or ones that they, I mean, obviously they're, pa they're websites. You don't want people getting into them. So how can we make it that we can quickly come up with a password without using the same password over and over again? How do we break ourselves of this bad habit? Well, YubiKey has a really nice feature that we can use to create on the fly, strong passwords that are super easy to remember. Let me show you how to do it. So I'm going to show you how you can personalize your YubiKey to achieve that really quick password, really quick secure password. So you're going to go and go to the Yubico website and download the YubiKey personalization tool. Now, when you open that up and my key is already inserted, you'll see it says 
These are all of the features that are supported. And again, the YubiKey doesn't just do this. Is the difference between the YubiKey and things like the Google Key. The YubiKey supports a lot of different things, whereas the Google Key, which is good, but it only really supports like one or two or three things. This allows you to make changes like we're changing right now. So we're going to go to static password. That's a password that's going to be embedded into the key. And we're going to go to advanced. Now I'm going to say this like three times so that you don't make any mistakes. Use configure slot two. use slot two. slot two. And the reason for that is slot one is already used by a bunch of stuff and you can mess things up if you use slot one. So the first thing you're going to want to do is click on slot two. Got me? Done. Okay. It will create a, we're going to use these little generate buttons to create a uh, really cool long password that we're going to use together with our own little thoughts to create a really good secure password. So that way we can come up with one that's really quick, but we don't have to think about it. So it can be up to 32 characters or more but we're gonna to wanna to add our own stuff. So we're gonna just say 16. So it's gonna take whatever we give it plus these 16 characters. So we're gonna have a nice long password. So we're gonna go ahead and click generate. So we get some random piece here. We're gonna go hit generate. So we get some random piece here. And then this is important. We wanna be able to recreate this so that you, if you have more than one key, you have the same configuration on both keys or all three keys or whatever you have. So once we generate this, in fact, I'll hit generate a couple more times just to get a really random one. I'm going to take these two lines of code and I'm going to take them and I'm going to save them. And the reason being that if I ever need to create this again, this weird password again, I can, I'm going to, I'm going to save this, uh, as YubiKey master key. I'm going to say, take this, print this out, save it. And then if I ever need to do it again, instead of hitting generate, I can just cut, copy and paste these back into these windows and I will get that configuration. Does that make sense? So you want to save this so that you have it. So again, slot two. I'm going to, it says unprotected serial number. We can leave everything else alone. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to click on uh, right configuration. Now it also is saying it's going to come up and say, uh, Charlie, I saw you just did your configuration. Do you want to save this just in case? And so I will just save this just in case. So now we have a unique 16 digit or 16 character password that is in that key. Now, the way that we get to see what that password is, is by putting our finger and holding it on the key for three seconds. Okay, so uh, this is our unique 16 character password that is hard coded into our YubiKey. And since I have more than one YubiKey, I would do the same thing, but in this case, I would do the cut, copy, and paste of this so that both keys, whenever I push and hold the button on the UB key for more than three seconds, it'll spit out these 16 characters. Now, while you might be tempted to just use these 16 characters as your password, nay, nay, we're not going to do that. We're going to do that uh, in a unique way. So let's take a look at how, and you want to save this, by the way, um, just again, keep it in the same file and I'll show you now how we're going to use it. When I say Disney, What's the first thing that you think of? Okay, so obviously for all of us, it's going to be different. All right. So for example, when I say Disney, the first thing I think of is Winnie the Pooh. So I'm my password. So when I get ready to make a password for the Disney site, I'm going to type in P-O-O-H and then add that to the end. And I add that to the end by simply putting my finger on my Yubi key and holding it for three seconds. And that will add it to the end. So now I have this super long password that's easy for me to remember because the next time I go back to the site, I just type, it says, what's the password? I type P-O-O-H. I push and hold the UB key and Bob's your uncle. I now have a long password. Let's go to another website. Let's say we're at 
Fandango. We're going to go, you know, where we're going to order movies. So when I say Fandango, what's the first thing that you think of? And again, it's going to be different for every person. I think of green for Green Lantern. And so I type in Green, Lan for green for Green Lantern. I push and hold the UB key and Bob's your uncle. That is now the password for my Fandango site. Okay. So now I have two different distinct passwords for each website, but as long as I pick the first thing that comes to my head, I will never ever have a problem. Poo, when did the Disney poo? Okay, Fandango green. So I put in very simple pot. And even if they break into either Fandango or the Disney, all they're gonna do is get this password, which is unique to that site. And even, let's just even say they got into Fandango and into Disney and got these two passwords they still would have to figure out, well, how am I picking it? They have no idea how I'm picking these. Let's say I go to Netflix, okay? What's the first thing you think of when you come to Netflix? Now, obviously you don't want to type in Netflix, but you get what I'm saying. Even if now you have no idea what I'm thinking of right now that I would use for Netflix. So even if you knew it was something plus all of this, still wouldn't help you. So, this is a way to use YubiKey. So even if you don't use LastPass, if you use the YubiKey in this method with uh, what I just showed you with this second configuration, you will end up with unique passwords for every single one of your sites and never have to worry again. That's gonna do it for part two. There's a part three and a part four. There's a lot to cover with security. Uh, I really appreciate you guys hitting the like button, hitting the subscribe button, and the comments, you guys. I asked you guys if this is what you wanted to see, and you said yes, and so we're going to just keep doing it. Uh, again, we have the 100th episode coming up soon, and that is going to be something really special. Plus, I'm going to tell you about how you can see some additional videos that will not, they'll be available on YouTube, but only to you guys who are subscribers. And uh, that's a little thank you because you guys have really been very supportive. So until the next time, this is the High Tech Nomad signing out.